What? What, what, what? What the hell is this? Harumph, 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 harumph. I didn't get a harumph out of that guy. Give the governor harumph. Harumph. You watch your ass. I see you shiver with anticipation. Let the show begin. Hey, everybody, this is David Heretic coming at you with another edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. And tonight. Tonight! All right, we're coming back to Typo Negative. Yes, indeed. Typo Negative fans, feeling you. Come on now. Here we go. This is a request from Aaron Rodriguez. And Aaron wanted to see me react to this song by Typo Negative called Christian Woman. Now, <laughs> Have I heard the song before? Yes, and I explained this to Aaron. Uh, I have heard this song before, and I can honestly say, without a shadow of a doubt, this is my favorite Type O Negative song of all time. I love this song. Um, I know there have been some radio edits where they only do the first part, and I'm just like, I hate that. I love all three parts of this song. I think this song is in all honesty, I, I know a lot of people say, well, what about black number one? What about black number one? Yeah, you might think that's their masterpiece and that's great. I think this song is their masterpiece. It has the three separate parts, three separate movements, very clearly different from each other, but yet all coming together. I love this song, I really do. Um, having said that, Aaron assured me that this is a live performance and it's a live performance of all three parts. Okay, all right, fine, I'll do it. I'll do it because it's a live performance and it is all three parts, which I'm looking forward to. I've never heard this live before. I've never seen them uh, perform this live. I've, I've never seen them live really ever. I, I've never gone to a show. Um, I wish I had had the opportunity to go to a show, but I never had the chance. Um, but I'm looking forward to this. I really am and I, I cannot wait to get to this. So let's get through the spiel really quick. I have heard the song before, yes. So I will not be reacting to the song itself in any way, shape or form. I will only be reacting to evaluating and scoring the live performance. We're talking about showmanship. We're talking about stage presence, stage interaction, crowd interaction, stage energy, uh, production, stuff like that. That's all, okay? Um, not the song writing, okay? Please keep that in mind. This was posted by Lost Soul, okay? And the video has 736,739 views. It'll get you there. Other than that, there's really nothing else left to say. Link to the original video will be down below in the video description for your viewing pleasure at your leisure. Let's get started. What do you say? You ready? Are you ready? Because <laughs> I am. Oh boy, I'm excited for this. All right, because here we go. All right, here we go. Typo negative. Christian woman. Cool. It looks live to me. All right, let's do this. All right, boy, let's do this. <laughs> Don't be afraid to sing. Yeah. Across the bar, the bedroom. Come on. <laughs> A little variation there, okay. Went down. Feels faster. Like that little variation, okay. Okay. 
So far, so good. <laughs> I, I can't help but notice um, the tempo feels faster than I remember it being on the recording. It, it feels a little more upbeat. It's not uncommon for bands to increase the tempo slightly whenever they perform live. There's a number of reasons for that. Number one, they may feel that in a live setting, the song might drag if they keep it at the slower tempo. By increasing the tempo, it helps the song move along a little easier and a little, it gives a little more life, a little more energy. Two, time constraints. If you could cut off, I mean, the song is, let's see, the video is how long? Seven, about seven and a half minutes, okay? So if you could take an eight minute long song or eight and a half minute long studio song and by speeding up the tempo, cut off a whole minute, wouldn't that be worth it? Because if you do that over the course of three or four songs, you just freed up three or four minutes. You could squeeze another song in there. You could. You could give the crowd another song. Over the course of 10 to 12 songs, that's two more songs. Give the crowd 12 songs instead of 10. You know what I mean? I, I got no issue with it. I, I, I got no issue with it at all. As long as the song stays recognizable, for the most part true to itself, and it doesn't go so fast that it gets out of control and uncomfortable. You know what I mean? But so far, I'm enjoying it. It's got good energy. Uh, let's keep it going. Crowd's bouncing. Crowd's into it. to him going down to that lower register for that part the the corpus christi part I, i'm usually hearing him like in that lower register hearing it coming up in that upper register i'm kind of torn i miss the low note don't get me wrong i i, I miss the low note and that's where i'm torn i do miss the lower register but i gotta tell you the energy that he got from going up in that upper register that was awesome. I want to hear it again. I'm sorry. I, I got to hear it again. No, no, I don't care. Hey, it's my show. If I want to go back, we're going to go back. I want to hear that again. I, ooh, <laughs> the more I think about it, the more I like it. The energy level that that got was really nice. <laughs> Chill. Yes. Oh, goosebumps. Yes, I love it.
energy. Dear Lord. Oof. Don't get me wrong. Like I said, I, I do miss the lower register, but I got to tell you, in a live setting, carrying that kind of power coming out of Peter Steele's vocals right there, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, oh, man. I'm not going to go back again. I, I, I'll, I'll go back on my own time and do that again. I know you guys wanted me to keep going, so I'll, I'll keep going for right now. But yeah, I'm definitely going to go back and check that out again. That was nicely done. All right, we're getting into the second part. God, that lower register of his, I, God dang it. Oof. So good, man. So good. He had that gift. He had that talent of being able to get down that low and just make it work for him. He really does. He really did. Oh, God. Uh, anyway, it's just. It just adds a new, no pun intended, I swear, okay? No pun intended. It just adds a different depth to what you hear from a lot of other bands. Oh, go ahead and boo me. I don't care. I, I, look, I told you I didn't mean for it to be a joke, okay? You quit booing me. No, it really does, though. It, a lot, it adds a depth to this band that no other band, especially during this time, had. And honestly, to this day, I can't really think of too many bands that have a lead vocals that can get down to that lower register like he did. So, yeah, man, he was something special. He really was. A little variation there. significantly faster. And now we're getting into the third and final part. Man, that ending, holy smokes. Tried to keep him back and I just couldn't. Ah. Woo. <laughs> With a tear in my eye. Oh my goodness. Ah. <laughs> that ending, wow. Powerful ending, strong ending.
Oh no, we gotta go back a little bit more. Oh no, no, no. Oh yeah. Got just a little bit of feedback. Oh wow. The tempo on that last part, especially, what a difference in tempo. I'm, I'm thinking it's at least like between 16 to 20 beats per minute faster. At least. Probably more. Um, significant difference in tempo. And again, like I said, it, it, here's the thing, though. It never got so much faster that it got a, away from them. And it didn't feel like a completely different song. It, it, you could tell it's the same song. The, the feel was still there. It was just pushed fast enough to make it a little more upbeat, a little more energetic. And for a live setting, you want that. So not, that is not a complaint. That is absolutely not a complaint. Um, let me think about it. There's a lot to think about. Um, I'll see you in the review. We'll talk about it. Well, there you go, folks. That was Typo Negative with the long version, all three parts of Christian Woman performed live. Uh, this was a request from Aaron Rodriguez. All right, um, before I get my score, I just need to reiterate this and because I, I know sometimes people don't always hear me the first time or they forget. So I'm gonna reiterate this. Um, I am very familiar with the song, okay? This is actually, without question, this is my favorite typo negative song of all time. Um, don't get me wrong, there are a lot of the songs I love from them. Um, I, I like Too Late. Uh, Black Number One, I think, is a great song. I think Black Number One is a great song. I, I do see why a lot of people would say that's their masterpiece song. I get it. I just, I don't agree. <laughs> um, uh, let's see, what else? Uh, Blood and Fire, big fan of that one. Um, uh, Burnt Flowers Fallen, uh, I love that one. Uh, Wolf Moon. Big fan of that song. Uh, In Praise of Bacchus, love that tune as well. There's a bunch of tunes from Typo Negative that I'm, that I'm familiar with that I like off of those two albums. Uh, Bloody Kisses and October Rust, both of those albums. I own both of those albums. The funny thing is, I own pretty much every Typo Negative album. I've never listened to any of their other albums. Isn't that weird? God, what is wrong with me? Um, but I'm very familiar with those other two albums though, man. Uh, Bloody Kisses and October Rust. I know those songs inside and out. So I know the song. I'm very familiar with the song. It's like I said, it's my favorite song from them. So I will not be basing my score in any way, shape, or form on the song itself, the song writing. It is not going to come into play here, okay? I am only going to be basing my score on the live performance, showmanship, stage presence, crowd interaction, stage interaction, uh, 
production, stuff like that, okay? Not the song itself. Just please keep that in mind. All right, on a scale of one to 10, I am gonna give that live performance of my favorite typo negative song, I'm gonna give that an 8.8. .8. Yep, 8.8, .8. I feel good about that score. Let me tell you why. Why? When we're talking about stage energy, one of the last bands that you will think about is Typo Negative. They're not known for their stage presence. They're not known for a lot of moving around. They're not known for a whole lot of motion. And, and there's a reason for that. First of all, drummer stuck behind the drums. Keyboard player, because he is so overutilized with this band, he does a lot in this band. He has to, to really help fill out the sound. He has got to be playing through like 90 to 95% of the songs that they do, he's gotta be playing. It's not like he can step away and go up to the front of the stage and interact. He just, he can't do that. So it's not on him. Peter Steele, he's singing lead vocals. It's very hard for him to move away from the mic. Now he does though, and we did see that here. When he wasn't singing and he was able to take some steps away, he did. He moved back, he was able to rock out a little bit, those big motions on those pick slides and stuff like that. He was interact. He was, he was doing some stage presence there. He was, was it a lot? No, but it was as much as he could possibly do because otherwise he's a slave to the mic. Now, that leaves the guitar player. <sighs> there are times he's doing backing vocals, yes, but he also has a lot more time away from the mic that he can move around the stage and he did. If you go back and watch the video, there were a number of times he was moving around the stage. Now, he never went all the way over to stage right to interact with Peter. He never did that, but he would move within his circle in the first, in his, on the left half of the stage. He would move around that entire left half. It would have been nice if he had gone over and interacted with Peter, but you know, hey, we can't always get what you want, right? But, uh, he, he still was moving around nonetheless. And I saw him interacting with the crowd. Peter was interacting with the crowd too. You know, at the very beginning, feel free to sing along. You know, hey, that's crowd interaction. And then getting them to, you know, hey, come on, let me hear you type of thing. Awesome, that's crowd interaction. Getting the crowd to interact with you and with the song. So there was that. Um, not a ton of stage energy, like I said, but what could be done was done pretty well. And I, I got no issue with that whatsoever. It was a great performance considering the fact that this is a band that a lot of the members are literally handcuffed to their position where they literally cannot move around at all, you know? And the ones that can are limited other than the guitar player. But like I said, the guitar player made the most of it. Um, I loved the energy from the songs. Uh, much different from the studio version. It, it, it came down to one thing and one thing alone, tempo. Um, the, they didn't change keys. They didn't alter any chords. Um, all they did was increase the tempo of the songs. Now, was that for time constraints or was that because they consciously did that to make the song more energetic? I don't know the answer to that. And I don't think anybody else honestly does either other than the surviving members of Typo Negative. They're probably the only ones that can answer that question. So it, it could be either reason. I, and the thing is, either reason is perfectly fine. You know, maybe they wanted to go a little bit faster with the song so they could squeeze it in extra song for the crowd. I got no issue with that whatsoever. Always give the crowd more when you can, uh, but always leave them wanting more too. Um, or maybe it was just because they wanted to get more and share the song. And to be perfectly honest, the song, it. The, the song Christian Woman at, on the studio album is not the most energetic song. It's not. Uh, the only energetic part of the song really is the third part, which in this version took off like a shot. But they also increased the tempo of the other two, and that was really cool. It was a, it was a different spin. Um, everybody did a fine job from the instrumentation standpoint. I, I never realized uh, just I I always knew the keyboard player was was a significant part of the of the of the of the songs in the recordings. I never realized how much he was needed in a live setting until I saw them perform uh, for the first time on the channel, and now on this one too. He is prominent 
to the live. I mean, not just from a keyboard patch, but like doing like the vocals, like the the cor the, the choral vocals and stuff. That's all him. Yeah, this was this was done before like track and stuff like that. So he had to do all that himself. You know, all those choral vocals, those layered chorals, uh, choral vocalizations. That's all on the keyboard, along with the melodic lines that he's playing with the other hand. So. He's got his hands full. I never realized just how much he had his hands full until I saw this. Um, lastly, I'm gonna talk about uh, Peter Steele's vocals on this. Taking some liberties. Now, now, why the liberties were taken, I don't know. I will say on the studio version, I liked it in the on the first part of the song. When he goes down and does the Corpus Christi part, it, it's down in the lower register. I like that, but I gotta say, I really gotta say, doing it live the way he did definitely had more energy, definitely had more light. So I get it. In a live setting, I'm glad he did it that way. Um, and there were some other liberties he took as well, and, uh, and they all fit, and they all just added to that live experience. I mean, I don't know about you guys. I, I don't know about you, but when I go see a live band, there's the studio version of the song, right? You're very familiar with it. And then you see them play it live. And they'll play the song note for note, beat for beat, word for word, tone for tone, exactly like the album. It's cool. It's nice. But I want to have a live experience. And one of the biggest things that bands do when they play live is they will take liberties with their own songs. And they'll do some you know, variations in the vocals. Maybe they'll switch some words around. Maybe they'll, you know, play a guitar solo a little differently than it was on the album. I love that. I really do. And hearing Peter Steele take those liberties with his vocals, it was really cool, man. In, a, in the live setting, it really added to the overall presentation and performance. So look, I thought this was a great job. It, they did the best job they possibly could with what they have with the song. Is the song a high energy song? Not normally, but in this live setting, it had a whole new life. I have a whole new appreciation. And the funny thing is, this is my favorite song. And I just heard it live for the first time. And now I have an even bigger appreciation for it. So I like the live version more than the studio version. I gotta be honest with you, I, I do. And between that and the visual that we saw, it was fun. You could tell everybody on stage was really putting out a lot of energy and doing the best that they could to put on a good show for everybody. And the, and guys, mission accomplished. They did a fantastic job. That is why they're getting the 8.8. .8. So 8.8, .8, final score, I have spoken. Well, that's gonna do it for this edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. Hope you all enjoyed the show. Hopefully I was able to entertain you. If I was able to put a smile on your face and brighten your day, then I did my job, and I'm so glad I could do it. If you guys feel like joining the fan base, go ahead and click on that button down there. If you guys want to like the video, go ahead and like the video. If you guys want to ring the bell, go ahead and ring the bell. It honestly doesn't make any difference at all to me, but if you guys want to do those things, then by all means, feel free to do so. Well, that's going to do it for the night, folks. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, this is David Heretic signing off, reminding you to stay fabulous and support each other. Later, peace.